Landlords are abandoning Portland, Oregon after they passed a rent control policy in 2017, and now they've lost 14% of their single family rentals. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so another Pacific Northwest city that has passed too many anti-landlord laws, bills, and regulations has suffered a monumental loss in rental properties. Are you surprised? Because I sure as heck am not, okay? This is exactly what I predicted would happen. And now they actually have proof of it. Of course, they're still sitting there and they're wondering what happened, well, what's going on? Now, if you don't know what's going on, the city of Portland, Oregon passed the rent control policy back in 2017, right? And all the people who know anything about rent control know that if you take away the landlord's incentive and ability to make money, well, landlords are gonna get out of the rental property business. That is what happens everywhere that the uh, rent control policy passes. And, and that includes in Portland, Oregon. Now, normally you don't see this immediately, okay? It takes a little bit of time, but it's been five years. And in those five years, 14% of single family rentals have disappeared from the city, okay? 14% of them, that's a huge number. What that means is that it is harder than ever for renters, tenants to find affordable housing. It, it, and it will continue to be hard because the, the number of rentals is only gonna de decrease. It's not going to increase. People will start having to be look outside of the city to areas where there aren't rent control policies. And when they do look outside the city, they're gonna be paying full market rates. Okay, so this doesn't help make housing more affordable, except for the few lucky people who got locked into rent control and haven't moved and don't ever have to move. Okay, and th that's an absolutely awful proposition. You know, think about it for a minute. One of the reasons I don't like rent control is because it doesn't apply only to people who are low income and people who actually need uh, housing to be more affordable. It applies to everyone. So what you'll end up with is, and this happens in places like New York, you'll end up with a person who is a doctor making $500,000 a year and they've got a rent controlled apartment. You know how stupid that is? I mean, any politician in their right mind would think, well, th this, this isn't what I intended, but that's what they passed. They didn't make any exceptions for it. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So yeah, th this is absolutely nuts. Proof positive of the things I've been talking about in so many videos. Now, before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe button. Maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Did you expect there to be such a decline in the number of rental properties available for, you know, in a place that passed rent control? Okay, if you're a tenant on here and you're in favor of rent control, let me know, is this what you expected? Is this, you know, did you understand that this was what was gonna happen? Did you understand that landlords are, they're just not gonna play by the rules that you put in place. They're just gonna get out of the business. A lot of landlords did that and it's gonna get worse, okay? We're gonna go off and it's gonna be 20 years from now and if they don't remove this policy, guess what? there will be even less rental properties available because there's no reason for anyone to deal with any of this nonsense when they don't have to. If they can go right outside the city limits or outside the state and still make money as a real estate investor, as a landlord, they're gonna do that. That's what people do. There's still gonna be a few people willing to deal with all of the ridiculous regulations and the nonsense, but we're talking about big players here, okay? People who, they have a very long timetable. They you know expect very small, very stable, returns we're talking about you know um, very large real estate investors who own tens of thousands of units we're not talking about mom-and-pop landlords who own you know one two three units who just wanted to rent their uh, old house that they used to live in and now they're stuck under stupid policies like this okay oh man you know rent control is a very frustrating topic for me because any economist you know all the economics books you read they all say it doesn't work, yet they keep implementing these ridiculous policies. It just doesn't make sense unless these people really are, you know, just that dumb. Okay, I said it before in another video. Maybe these people really are that dumb. Anyway, this article is coming from therealdeal.com and it says, Portland lost 14% of rentals. Did rent control cause the decline? Well, I'll answer that right now. Yes, it did cause the decline, but let's get into the article and see what it says. 
In 2017, Portland passed rent control. In 2019, the Oregon State Legislature added statewide caps on rent hikes and evictions. Now, a study shows Portland lost 14% of its single-family rentals between 2015 and 2020, twice as much as in the surrounding three-county area. So, keep in mind, right, what, what I just read there. They said that the state of Oregon passed statewide caps on rent increases. Basically, there is a statewide rent control policy in place. But then it says there in the second paragraph that Portland lost twice as many single family rentals as the surrounding area. So even in the suburbs, even outside of the city limits, they are still losing single family rentals, okay? The number of single family rentals in the entire area is declining because they put those ridiculous statewide caps on rent increases in place, okay? So, the, you know, you, you can see the effect of what happens when government overreach occurs, okay? You get less available properties to rent. Is that what they wanted? Because I don't think that it, they understood what was going to happen when they passed these laws. But let's keep going. The homeowner and landlord groups that commissioned the study blamed the web of policies for Portland's loss of rentals, Inman reported. The city, however, is not convinced. The group said many small owners have opted to sell rather than navigate the patchwork of laws or risk noncompliance. A mom and pop landlord who isn't an attorney and only has a couple of units and isn't doing this as their primary job, they're really in a bad spot, Jeremy Rogers, director of policy and legal affairs at Oregon Realtors, one of the groups behind the survey, told the website. Of course, the buyers of those units might well continue to rent them. A lot of them are not going to continue to rent them, okay? A lot of the people they're selling these single family rentals to are owner occupants. That's what they don't understand, okay? When we get out of the business, we are selling to owner occupants. There's still a shortage of single family homes available for owner occupants to buy. So we're gonna get the most money when we sell to owner occupants and not to other landlords. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. So if we decide to get out of the rental business, those, those uh, properties are just gone. Now, he here's what I laugh at, right? The city isn't convinced that this is the reason people are selling. Yet the actual landlords, the people who invest in real estate, the property managers, the ones who are selling their properties are saying, yeah, this is why we're selling. We're selling because of all these rules and regulations you put in place. But the city's like, no, you're not. You're not selling your properties because of that. We know that you're not selling your properties. because, Like, how the hell do you know? We are literally telling you this is why we're selling our properties. And you're so pig headed. You're not listening to the words that are coming out of our mouths. We're selling our properties because you have too many rules and regulations. You know, the, the, the city is idiotic. Let me just say that. They don't believe, you know, they, they, they don't agree. Yeah, they're not convinced that that's the reason why landlords are getting out of the business. Even though the landlords themselves are telling them that's exactly what they're doing. Stupid, okay? And if the city actually listened to the landlords, maybe, maybe it would work out and less of them would you know, want to leave the business. If they listened to the landlords, didn't put these ridiculous laws in place, then maybe people would want to continue to operate their businesses there. The city's rent control laws, which took effect in March 2018, require landlords to cover relocation costs for tenants if owners raise rents by more than 10% or file an eviction without good cause. Owners who violate the ordinance can be fined as much as $4,500 for a three-bedroom property, according to Inman. The statewide measure tacked on even stricter regulations. Rent increases are capped at 7% in most instances. And under the law, landlords face additional burdens to evict tenants who have lived in a property for more than one year. So now we have two competing sets of legislation, okay? And they expect landlords to know which ones they fall under. The state is saying, oh, uh, you, you can only do 7% increase, but the city's saying, well, you can do up to a 10% increase. Like what? You know, like which one do I uh, comply with? Do I comply with the state or this? See, you see, this is why when they put too many regulations in place, you end up with a complete mess. You end up with landlords who are in non-compliance, not because they're bad landlords, but because they couldn't understand the rules. They had to hire a lawyer to pay just to figure out what all these ridiculous rules are. 
And let look at these regulations. You have to pay relocation costs if you want to raise the rent more than 10%. So this is a big issue to me because a lot of the properties that you come across, a lot of landlords don't raise the rent for a long period of time for a lot of tenants. So you'll have a tenant in a property paying, you know, let's just say 500 bucks a month rent when every other unit around it that is similar, they're paying over a thousand dollars a month, right? But the landlord is like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep this tenant in here. I'm gonna keep them paying this low rent and I'm not gonna raise rent on them. Well, one day that landlord decides to sell and they sell it to me, you know, another real estate investor, right? And then I'm like, hey, you know, I gotta give you a rent increase because your rent is so low, I can't even pay my mortgage with that 500 bucks a month, right? You know, so I'm gonna raise your rent up to 800 bucks a month, right? But that would be against the law in the city of Portland and in the state of Oregon. It would be against the law because the rent increase is too big. Even though the tenant would still be paying below low market level rents it you know it's a bigger than a 10 percent increase so therefore i am supposedly screwing the tenant over what a joke you know they, they don't look at the finances of the tenant they don't look at the numbers you know how much rental costs are in the area around it they only allow rent increases based on some arbitrary number for the entire area regardless of what your rents were set at before right these artificial cost uh ceilings they they don't work they don't work they don't work they don't work okay and the only person getting screwed over in the end will be the tenants because the landlords they're going to sell they're going to get out of the rental property business they're not going to deal with this nonsense so i'm not surprised that they lost 14 percent of their single family rentals and they will lose more